Hello everybody. Today we're at NetSeed. We are gonna give a full overview on how to operate a jetting machine. And we're gonna walk through comprehensive steps on how you start, how you set up your machine. We're gonna walk through proofing and then we're gonna jet some live cable. Now we're gonna talk about what it takes to get started out in the field day one jetting. You're going to need a jetting machine outfitted for the appropriate duct and cable size. Uh, you're also going to want cable end caps, cable seals, O-rings, BBs, sponges. Typically that's going to come whether you're renting or if you're purchasing the equipment. Uh, you're also going to want a compressor that meets all of the recommendations per the manufacturer. In this particular case, we're using a Kaiser M27. That is a 200 PSI machine and you absolutely want the ability to reach 200 PSI while jetting fiber. In addition to that, you want a real trailer. You're going to want some extra duct, the size that you're jetting into. Also gonna want some couplers, and then any associated hand tools uh, that might make your job easy. In this particular case, a microduct, large microduct cutter, and then a longitudinal slitter. For our run today, we're gonna to be using 18 millimeter by 14 millimeter microduct. And this is a redundant ring. It's a four-way future path. So if you're able to see into the handhole, we're gonna be jetting through the orange. The orange is going to travel up the parking lot. It's gonna go into an aerial section. It's gonna come down one, two, three spans, and then dip back down into the handhole. We're gonna test each duct at a time to make sure that we walk through those proofing steps and we have good, uh, good pathway. We're gonna start with air. Go ahead, Kurt. We wanna make sure that we don't have any water, dirt, debris coming out. And good air means I should have a very hard time stopping it from coming out. Good air. Now we're gonna put a cleaning sponge through. As you notice, this sponge is quite a bit larger than the duct. That's how it's supposed to be. You're gonna force it in and just continue to twist so we get it inside the duct. Then we're gonna reconnect. Typically, you can get a good idea on your pathway by timing the sponge. Sponge and microduct should normally travel about 50 feet per second. So I'm gonna set a stopwatch just to see how long this takes. Air, go. Sponge is out, took us about seven seconds. Next step, we're gonna to go to a BB. In an effort to stay safe on the job, gonna use this very high tech catching device for the BB. And Kurt, whenever you're ready, the air is on. We wanna make sure we hold this good and tight so the bottle doesn't blow off. And the next step of proofing, we would take some micro jetting lube. We would load it into the duct. We would put another sponge in, and then we would pass that sponge through the duct to make sure that we coat it. As part of our demo, we're gonna be coupling the orange duct to the green duct to give us a longer continuous run. Always important to get a fresh clean cut. So when we put our coupler on, we wanna make sure that it sits as clean and flush as it can to the inside. I'm gonna dress the cable through our cable guides, come out through the belt. When we put our cable seal on, you'll notice one is relatively flat side, the other side is recessed. We want the recessed part of the cable seal to be facing the air chamber when it goes in. On the duct side, everything inside the machine is grooved. So the O-ring slots right in, fits into the machine. We're going to lock this down and on the off chance 
that you go to tighten your duct and you can't get it tight, this tightening knob spins lefty loosey, righty tighty to make sure that you have the correct amount of pressure to lock your duct in. Then we're gonna put the top of the air chamber on. Should fit snug. When we lock it over, we wanna make sure that this locking tab drops into place. You can hear it click. You can see a slight separation. What we wanna do with our tightening knob is eliminate that. We don't wanna over tighten. If we over tighten the tightening knob, you're just adding additional stress and pressure on top of the air chamber. We just wanna get that good and tight to make sure that we don't strip anything out. One thing that we're gonna cover in terms of uh, preventative maintenance care for the machine, it's important that we always check the oil reservoir on the back of the machine to make sure that we're lubricating the motor. Uh, before we actually start installing cable, we can also make sure that it's in good working condition. So I'm gonna start by turning the power on to the throttle. As you notice, we have the cable inside the belts, but the belts are not engaged. And then I'm gonna slowly introduce throttle. And I'm gonna bring the belts up to about two bar. Inside this window, we will see a drop of oil slowly start to develop. That's almost perfect. We're at about 46 seconds. Now we have all our proofing complete. We have a cable end cap on the cable. We have the correct O-ring, correct cable seal. Now we're gonna get started installing the cable. I typically like to put at least enough cable to get past the first coupler, go in through the handhole. For whatever reason, I normally put in about 30 feet. And if you can get a close up on this counter while I'm pushing the cable in, on the top, you'll see the total feet installed. Then you'll see the feet per minute in the middle. And on the bottom, that is the total footage on the machine in thousands of feet, almost like an odometer. There we have 30 feet in. Now the only thing left to do is engage our belts. I like to hold onto the machine and then we're just gonna lean in, make sure it's tight. We don't wanna do that in a jerking motion. We also don't have to force it as hard as we possibly can. We wanna make sure that the belts are engaged on the cable so the cable doesn't move. Make sure that it's also lined up in the grooves of the belts. On the back, there's a tightening knob. So we wanna get the tightening knob to tight and then go one full rotation. And to give everybody an example of what the tightening knob does, if we release pressure on the belts and come back around to the front of the machine, without engaging the belts, if I just tighten on the tightening knob, you can see how much of an impact it has compressing the belts and adding pressure. So we'll go back to the first step. I've loosened the pressure on the belts. Engage the belts onto the cable, then tighten it down. As we get started, we're going to turn on the machine simply by pressing down that button. If we ever get into a situation where we have an issue at the reel or we just need to stop, it's as simple as pushing the emergency stop. Also, if you're not sure if your valve is turned on at your compressor, a good way to check to see if you have power at the motor is by opening the water separator. This will let you know that we now have power at the motor. So I'm gonna turn the machine on. The knob on the right is my throttle. Normally takes a good four or five turns. And then we will start to see pressure build on the gauge. Right now we're installing cable at about 260 to 270 feet per minute.
As you can see, our speed has slowed down a little bit. We're at about 200 feet per minute. So we're gonna introduce some air downstream. We have 936 feet. Once we have cable at the end, if you know how much you need for slack coil, you can run that extra 50 or 100 feet out. Then we're gonna shut the air down, let that air bleed off, and we're ready for the next run. Thank you for viewing today. If you wanna learn more about jetting or set up a demo or perhaps want to acquire equipment, please visit NetSeed at the link below.